All right, the tennis world is once again grappling with questions about fairness in sport and, of course, trans women. Fans, in fact, nearly 70% of all U.S. adults seem to have their minds made up. They say transgender athletes should only compete in the gender they were assigned at birth. But that hasn't stopped transgender athlete Alicia Rowley from winning a national women's tennis tournament. She just clinched a U.S. Tennis Association Women's 55-plus Grass Court Championship. That's fine with the USTA. Their transgender inclusion policy states those who transition from male to female are eligible to compete in the female category under the following conditions. The athlete has declared that her gender identity is female. The declaration cannot be changed for sporting purposes for a minimum of four years. Tennis legend Martina Navratilova, who's won 187 single titles during her career and has consistently spoken out against transgender men competing in women's sports, has called it a form of cheating. Here's what she had to say. Come on at USTA. Women's tennis is not for failed male athletes, whatever age. This is not right. This is not fair. Would this be allowed at the U.S. Open this month just with self-ID? I don't think so. Navratilova says this is a matter of fairness over exclusion or over equity, you might say. Joining us now, Elizabeth Pran. Look, tell me I'm wrong, but kid, your kids are going back to school Everybody yep. in you know, Atlanta suburbs, everybody's talking. Is everybody really talking about this around, you know, the, the soccer mom uh, picnic tables? Well, so first of all, I love telling you that you're wrong. But I will say that this is a huge concern for moms out there. And this is why. is because if, if suddenly if you don't support uh, biological men competing in women's sports, then you're transphobic, then you're homophobic, that you're anti-feminism, you're all of these things which is not true at all. I happen to be hugely supportive. If my son comes to me someday, let's say he goes through puberty and he says, Mom, I feel like I'm really a woman. Listen, there's a place for you in this world. I support you. I love you. But it is not on the ball field. It is not on the tennis court. And it is not in the swimming pool with women. Because if he looks at his sister, she was born a female. And she looks different than he does. So it's apples to oranges. And what I don't think is fair is that suddenly you paint it with a broad brush that just because I believe that, I don't support the trans community. And I absolutely do. I think it's right. Totally I get it. This is. Are we, though, because as we, as we watch the polling on this, right, the, the pendulum was swinging to where, to what you said, right, that you had to allow kids and, you know, 55 plus you, women's tennis, whatever, on grass courts, you know, adults can be adults. But when you're talking about kids, it's a different conversation. But the, the, the pendulum was swinging that you had to allow boys to play on girls' sports. Now the pendulum is swinging back. And I'm wondering if you're feeling and sensing this sort of fundamental change in the way people are looking at it, in the way people are, are acting and treating you about it? Well, when it, when it comes to your doorstep, right? So you only care when it starts to really impact you. Yeah. And think about all the resources, because now we're looking, we're, how far are we from the Olympics? So are the lines going to be blurred? What are the rules going to be? Does the testosterone have to be at a certain point? How much effort are we putting in to making sports what we call acceptable when, when really the lines are just getting blurred here? So with my daughter, if she wants to compete someday, is she going to have a chance? Is she going to have a chance to, to break a record? Because if I have to p compete against a man, my husband is 6'4", and if him and I were playing the same, it doesn't matter that I'm a college athlete. I don't hold a candle. I don't hold a flame to his candle. That there's, We are two different entities. So I'm wondering if people oh, are no, just getting I, I, a little bit more common sense. Yeah, or the, or there's a revolt, right, of, of sort of the, the mass who was tired of being called trans, transphobic. You know, we put the percentage up, what is it, 0.4% of people? Yes. Is this, I, I get the debate, right? But is this a solution or an argument in search of a problem? Is this really an issue on teams in suburbia Atlanta and suburbia Charlotte? Uh, not in suburbia Georgia. I'm in Georgia. But I, I mm. will say, um, uh, when we talk about that small percentage, that was one of the points that I was making earlier. Is, and you and I have had this conversation that sometimes the people who are most offended are people who are actually not even involved at all. They just want right. a cause to be upset about, and they want to draw the battle lines, and they want to make it divisive, when really, it just comes down to common sense. Everybody can compete. Why can't there be a transgender category? Why is that, well, that, that right? That, that's, what, uh, that's what the Boston Marathon did. You know what's funny? And I, I, we never see this, right? We never see 
the, the little girl who was born a little girl who's become a boy who wants to compete is a man. And, and there's never a debate well, about that, right? Well, yeah, because if you look at Leah Thomas, she was once 400th, and now she's ranking number one or tying for number one, and she's changing in the locker rooms, and there's a lot of things that are making people uncomfortable about that. So at first it was, oh, well, let's welcome her, let's make her who she wants to be, and then it's like, oh, well, wait a second. Now nobody can compete with her, and she's beating everybody. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.